add in preface the fact that today what we're going to do is look at uh, swings which don't look anything alike. And yet they are some of the greatest players that we've ever had in golf. Let's put on Hogan here. And we'll listen to him uh, later on, and as this, of course, is after he uh, pretty much was retired. Uh, he uh, wrote articles for uh, a magazine, Life Magazine, and of course, one of the or the best-selling uh, book of all time. And uh, he became a, a pretty good uh, uh, diagnostician and a pretty good teacher. You listen to him, that's for sure. The most important uh, thing in the golf swing to me is the movement of the lower body from the top of the swing. And if you don't mind, I'll demonstrate. First off, you start down below with your knees and your hips. At the top of the swing, you move the lower part of your body, not your shoulders, the lower part of your body, letting your arms and hands follow, bringing you into position to hit. But this is the first movement, there. Yes. Then you release at the bottom. Most people do it entirely opposite. They will take their shoulders first instead of their lower body. As a result, they come across the ball and hit the outside of the ball instead of the back of it. If you don't mind, I'll hit a ball. And the first thing to watch is, the, is what starts first from, from the top of the swing. So now you can see a couple of things about this. Um, and again, this spans all of the swing styles that we see. Well, when we see Nicholas, we'll see the same thing, essentially. When we see Tiger, we'll see the same thing. Things that I'm going to point out to you uh, are not idiosyncratic. They are things that will be seen in all of the players. And here is, if you can still see, you can see the right side post that he's swinging into, very stable. Uh, you can see uh, the left arm, which is fairly straight, not stiff but fairly straight because we don't need an extra lever there at the left. So most of the modern players uh, have a, uh, a straight but not stiff uh, left arm. Uh, you can see that knee is canted in towards the other knee or moving behind the golf ball. And that uh, is put, takes his uh, weight and puts it on the inside rib. You play this game on the inside rims of your, of your feet. And there we see a perfect example. And now I've stopped it just before the top. Hogan was, did probably as well as anyone in starting forward with his pressure transfers before the club actually reached its uh, maximum length. And that, uh, as we will see, we're going to talk a little bit about stretch factor and the X factor. And that actually ratchets up the coil. Remember, this is a bantam guy, bantam Ben. He could walk under a duck. He was about like this. Uh, looked like he fell off a charm bracelet. And uh, <laughs> the, the, he, my point is that he wasn't big, but he wasn't muscular either. Now, he was whipping. And, uh, the, he was such a small body type that he had to do what you're about to see. He had to increase his stretch factor. And we know that uh, in the stretch shorten cycle, that if you stretch a muscle before you shorten it, that you can multiply that power 40, 50 percent. And so the idea is not only to coil, as he is doing, as we'll see, is not only to coil, but is also to ratchet up that coil by the, what I call the smallest, most important move in golf. And when I and I have looked at thousands of videos, believe me, and what I see is that if I had to name one thing 
that is absent in the average bear's golf swing and is present in all, and I say 100% of the good professional's golf swing. It's what you're about to see. If you got it, you have a chance. If you don't got it, you don't have a chance. And I will explain that if, in terms of the kinematic sequence in a minute. But I want you to watch now Hogan as he goes to the top of his swing, how he actually starts the lower body. He starts to garner the ground forces by transferring his pressure, pounds per square inch now, transferring his pressure into his lead hip without, and here's the key, without opening his shoulder angle, without using his shoulders. That takes the latissimus dorsi, the trapezius, the big banded muscles of the back, the glutes, and stretches them in preparation for their contraction. Okay, so now we've built up this move. Let's see what it looks like. Can you see that move right there? Do you see it? Huh? See it? You got to look for it. And most people, by the time you live here, you would have seen in instruction and teaching, we go through this and how to spot it and what to do in order to develop it, how to intervene when your students don't have it and when you don't have it. Yes. Kinematic sequence has been measured by uh, somebody that I, I serve on a board with, and uh, his name is Phil Cheatham, and he was the first guy really to uh, put sensors on the body, and one sensor goes on the pelvis, one sensor goes on the thorax, one sensor goes on the lead arm, and one sensor goes on the club head. And that sensor, those sensors send back information on the rot rotary aspects of what happens. And then they create a graph, and what you see in the graph is as follows. The first unit, which is the first sensor area, which is the pelvis, reaches on the downswing, reaches its maximum rotational velocity first. Remember, this is a kinematic sequence. In golf, some things are sequential, some things are simultaneous. This happens to be sequential. If you get the things that are supposed to be sequential simultaneous and the things that are simultaneous sequential, you got big problems.